many years have you done the postcard fest? Oh, not terribly many, maybe five. And how did you first find out about it? Uh, uh hello, you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never know. You never know. I, I didn't know about it before I knew you. What attracted you to it in the first place? Actually, I didn't even want to do it because I don't write in August. August is like the crackly month, you know, everything's drying up, there's no rain. Um, but, you know, you you talked about it very encouragingly, and I thought, okay, I'm going to give it a shot. And um, the first year was really hard. I mean, even just a couple of words were like, it was, uh, I had to kind of drag them out of my, out of my hand, out of my head. Um, and it didn't get easier until this year, believe it or not. So. You had a method this year. You were doing a serial poem. Yeah, yeah, not cold cereal, not hot cereal, but cereal. Um, yeah, you know, I've had this this idea for a series of poems um, bouncing around in my head for probably about 20 years. I wanted to do one called <laughs> uh, The 28 Moons of August. Actually, it was tw just 28 moons. And um, I thought, this year I thought, you know, I think I'll try 28 moons of August. Well, of course, there are 31 days in August on the fest, or the thir 31 names to respond to. Um, and I had just started a new job. I had just started physical therapy for a shoulder issue. And I was a mess. Um, I mean, starting a new job at my age after many years in my previous job, not leaving by choice necessarily kind of forced out because he because uh the owner was closing the business um it was really stressful and i thought you know what i i committed to do this i'm just going to do it and it never got easier it was hard every single day that i worked on it but i did it and i came out with a chapbook at the end i mean i have i i just need to sit down and, and spend a little bit more time on it and start sending it out but I actually came out with a body of work that I, it feels pretty decent to me it doesn't feel like um well let's put it this way I'm not a po person that writes with prompts I can't do it I, I don't like the idea of just writing a poem just because you feel you should write a poem I go the other way um instead of me choosing to write a poem poem chooses me and then I respond to the muse that way um and I know a lot of people don't write that way um uh you know, I've tried to have a, a dedicated writing practice my whole life, essentially. And I end up with just crap. It's, I just finally gave into the fact that, you know, I'm going to write when called upon to write. But I did it. Um, <coughs> don't know if I could want, would want to do it again. Um, I mean, not, not the postcard fest, but having a prompt like this. But I think the fact that I had been thinking about this for so long um, made it made it doable. So it was it was like it was it was a big a big wall to push through. Um, yeah. Take us through the process of this past August where you sit down in front of your desk. Um, I'm assuming you're at your desk now and you have your list of 32 names including yourself and uh, you maybe you've got your stamps and and everything so then what happens or what happened this past postcard fest well <clears throat> actually i designed the postcard um i i, I could go get one but um they're in the other room in a folder i'll wait okay hold on so here is my pull, put it up a little bit postcard um i each of the each of the moons has text on them. The text is taken from, I have this set of three old dictionaries that I grew up with that nobody wanted. So I rescued them and I, I cut them up. But they have, um, there's wonderful visuals and old dictionaries, I love old dictionaries. But each of the, the 
text on the moons are different um, dictionary entries having to do with moon, lunar, lunacy, um, rotation of the planets. And unfortunately, if, uh, you know, I, I don't even know if anybody actually took the time to read it because I did a lot of um, photo editing on this after I, um, what do you call it, pasted it up. I mean, I, and this is, I used a font in, when I labeled the moons, I used a kind of an old typewriter font that I downloaded. Um, so it's kind of hard to read, read what these little lines of text say. And I yellowed it a little bit so it looks kind of old timey. Oh, that was really fun to do. Um, that was a big project. And then I um, had them all cut. I cut them all at um, Fe uh, Kinko's, whatever, FedEx. I cut them too big. So I borrowed Peggy Barnett's um, giant paper cutter, which is uh, about 50 years old, and um, recut them all. So it was kind of a kind of a process. But so um, one of the things that was really kind of thrilling about this project. Um, having to do with the moon is that I was so aware every day, both morning and night, where the moon was in the sky. I um, read a lot about um, moon cycles, rotation of the moon uh, in relation to Earth and other moons. Um, you know, writing poetry um, is an, often an act of research. Um, I think for a lot of people, it certainly is for me. I like to know what I'm talking about. I want to make sure I'm using words that are relevant. Um, so that part was really fun, um, both the research and just keeping track of where the moon was, what was it visible, mostly visible because it was August. Um, and I would take a scrap of something that lit up when I looked at the moon and then sit down at my computer and start typing. I actually typed them on the computer first. <laughs> I didn't write them because I, I don't write poetry by hand. So I had to type it and then I hand wrote it on the card. You got to read a couple of them. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to make this screen slightly smaller. So another thing that was really, um, I found really interesting in all this was that, hold on, was that things that were happening out in the world influenced, of course, what I wrote about the moon. So um, they start, the first one is new moon, 0%, and then it goes to the new moon um, on day 29. So one of the things that happened, I'm going to find this one. Um, was on August 3rd and 4th, there was a whole round of uh, mass shootings. Um, and on August 3rd, it was a Saturday, it was the El Paso shootings. And so I have two poems and also I bring in, I bring in the fact that my son um, has guns. Um, uh, he likes to shoot, um, and that's been a, an issue with me, but, you know, it's his life. So, anyway, I'll read, I'll read two having to do with that. The first one is um, Waxing Crescent, 17%. The morning news is a litany of gunshots, and nothing I write will cause anyone to put down a weapon and walk away. When I asked my son why he left his coat on in the house when he came for Sunday dinner, he mentions his concealed carry permit. We eat, triggered into silence. And then the next day, waxing crescent 26%. Let us not illuminate the hole the bullet leaves as it enters flesh. Show us instead any thin curve of light so that we may hold steady in our belief that the world continues to turn towards love. Um, 
Yeah, uh, after I wrote the first one about my son and his concealed carry permit, I thought, okay, there's no moon in it, but I wanted to bring the moon theme in with the gun bullet shooting theme in the next one. So uh, that felt good. Fantastic. Thank Fantastic. You. Um, how does Popo augment your own poetry composition practice? Um, well, let's just say because I generally do not write in August, um, it became my poetry practice in August. And the years I've done it, it has been my, it has been all I have written in August, mm -hmm. which is good. I mean, it's great, you know. Um, you had 29 moon phase cards, so there are two other cards. What did you do with those? Oh, um... One of them had um, moon language in it. The other one uh, was a chicken poem. <laughs> <laughs> but it has to do with, <laughs> of course, I had to write a chicken poem in there. I'll read this one. This was actually the last one. It was 9-1. Um, 9-1, why was I writing a poem on 9-1 and sending it? Who knows? My flock of sisters, bickers and clucks, like my three hens out back, arguing over a blueberry. We're too old to pillow down in shared bunks, but a text message delivers the daily squawks as if we'd just roosted for the night, wing to wing. I'm guessing the answer to this question is no, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Do you <laughs> send any bonus cards over the 31? No, I didn't. <laughs> Three things you love about the fest. Oh, well, the first thing I love, of course, is getting the cards from other people. I mean, it's so much fun to get real mail these days. Uh, and, so, and, and the cards are also different. I had some really odd vintage card postcards, which I love because I have a whole collection of vintage postcards, which I don't use for this because I want, I love them. I keep them for myself. Um, a lot of handmade cards some really wonderful ones. Um, last year when we had the, uh, when the, um, what do you call that? The uh, eclipse happened in August. There were a whole bunch of eclipse poems. I'm sure everybody got eclipse poems. Um, and there were eclipse stamps last year too. And I tried to find some this year. Um, actually, I, I did find them this year, but they were the full price ones, so. I didn't buy them. I cheaped out and got postcard stamps. In honor of the eclipse, I blacked out a couple of times that month. <laughs> uh, um, so, any anything else about the fest? That's uh, what you do. You deal much with the Facebook page? I don't. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. Why? Why don't you? Why don't you go there? You know, I did the first couple of years. Um, I think this year I didn't just because um, everything was crazy. Uh, you know, I, I had I had very little brain space this year in August. So, yeah. I mean, I, I probably would have because um, it was fun. It was fun seeing people talk about it. Anything else about the fest that's noteworthy that you like? Um, well, I know a group of poets in New Zealand from, um, it came from blogging um, 10 plus 15 years ago. Uh, and one, a couple of years ago, I got one of those poets to participate. And that was fun. That was really fun. I, I really tried to drag um, a few more in, but I couldn't, couldn't get anybody interested. If you were the Popo Queen, what would you change about the fest? <laughs> queen. So are you the king? I like to consider myself the postcard master general. <laughs> That's really funny, Paul. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> uh, so if I was the postcard mistress general, no, I hate that. I hate that because it, it's in service to the master. No, we're not going to go there. Or there's something else concubine about it. Con <sighs> well, how can I make that an adjective? Concubinary? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> I want you to um, 
pull that word out in Nick's company sometime and there see you go. what happens. That is really funny, concubinary. That's so uh, oxymoronic. Is that right? Uh, what was the question? Oh, if I could change anything? No, nah, nothing. No, no, it's perfect. It works. So organized. Well, what organized. advice would you have for someone considering joining the fest? What advice would I have? Do it. I mean, I, I recruited a number of people, you know. Um, yeah, but just because it is fun. It is fun to get mail. And now that I have had, a, 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 as far as my own writing goes, a, a, a fairly really successful one where I didn't feel like I was just writing some words on a page to fulfill my um, obligation to to it that I committed to that I wanted I want to participate you know if it was in a different month I would it would be more fun for me but it was really good this year so yay thank you for um, continuing to encourage you know because I who knows um, when I would have come out with this I was disappointed you didn't read some of the moon poems at your feature at C and P Coffee. You know, I didn't even think about it. I know you heard the first half. I read the second half at Easy Speak, and I you weren't there. Yeah. What's good? What's it going to take to get Mary Crane to do the fest? You know, August is an impossible month for her. Um, this year she was traveling. She was in Russia, in Siberia, but it's she grows most of her own food and cans it so she's she's busy busy but it's like mary this you know it could be like 15 minutes a day you know so i'll work on her all right yeah you know usually, usually the wrap-up question is do you have a postcard poem you'd like to share but you've already shared a couple oh I'll sh I'll, this this is a good one to wrap up with okay okay so this is waning crescent six percent so it's it's um the last moon you can see. Clouds laid out end to end, and the lunar remnant stuck like a bent pin out of sight, all things diminished. An old woman growing blind so slowly, she doesn't notice the diminishing light until there's nothing but the invisible body of the end of her life. I think, I think that I will end the chat book with that one far out yeah thank you thank you yeah i was really impressed with your series um you know i think that seriality is one of the challenges of the fest for people who want to go deeper the first challenge is for people to write spontaneously on the card the second challenge is uh spontaneity uh, i'm sorry the second challenge is seriality uh, I think the third challenge is making your own cards. I think the fourth challenge uh, is uh, the calligraphy of it, how to make your handwriting look better than it does. And, you yeah, know, and that's, that's, that's hard in this age. It's hard. Yeah. It, it's a real hard one. So uh, I think the, fe the fest has endless depths, and uh, it's stunning to me how one is encouraged to go deeper and deeper, and the fest. Um, gently allows that and it's a really beautiful thing so thank you for displaying seriality in such a beautiful way i loved hearing those poems at easy speak and thanks for your inspired participation you. in the fest thank you and i have my idea for next year already so there you go yeah yeah so now you're talking i uh on, on the other hand have been um today between postcard uh interviews have been making my own cards again, Cascadia flags. So I got. Oh, nice! I got these the, are for next year. These are for next year or the year after. Oh, I'm, I'm running wow. real ahead. Um, I think <laughs> that Bhakti really likes the one that's uh, Bernie and Bunny. I don't know if you can if you could see. Oh yeah, I saw Bernie and Bunny. Bernie and Bunny. Hold yeah. it up. Hold it up a little higher. There you go. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, Bernie with the uh, Bindi. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't quite Bindi, get it. Bindi, Bernie, and Bunny. That's right. <laughs> if I fall fun. Okay. All right, T, until, uh, until Monday night. This was fun. Thanks, Paul.
Thank you for doing it. All right. Stay out of trouble. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.